You're watching Telecom TV's exclusive coverage of the Etsy NFV 9 meeting in Prague in the Czech Republic. I'm joined now by Michael Brenner. Michael is the SVP of Product Strategy at Clearpath Networks. Michael, thanks for joining us today. Thank um, you. Michael, you're also a vice chair of the Etsy NFE ISG. It, in that capacity, what progress are you seeing on the NFE work to date? So I see that we are now in a transition phase from a phase in uh, Etsy NFV phase one, which lasted the last two years, uh, where we are trying to get most companies at most interested parties in the, in the industry on sort of the same page with respect to what network function virtualization is. And I think phase one was a great success in, in that sense. Phase two is focusing more on making that success a reality in the industry uh, by taking some of the learnings that we have documented in phase one and transforming that into a set of normative requirements and normative architectures and normative uh, you know, information models and so on that will drive interoperability between uh, different components such that the operator can deploy a, a carrier grade solution uh, that takes best in class components from the vendors of their choice. Um, some of the things that are slightly different in addition to that is also that there are other initiatives in the, in the industry that have started partially because of the result of uh, what NAV has done, and that is organization, for example, such as Open NAV, um, which is an open source community which was also driven by operators. Uh, and they are uh, trying to build a reference implementation that uh, follows as much as possible requirements that we derive from Etsy NAV. Uh, the challenge, of course, is uh, not only for the newly elected vice chairs as myself, but for the entire Etsy NFV organization is to, to write requirements that are uh, understandable and relevant to code developers, especially in the open source community, uh, and find a way to collaborate with those open source communities so that we synergistically achieve our goals and in the process minimize duplication and uh, you know, waste of company resources. So one of the things that I plan to do as vice chair, although officially we have not signed roles and responsibilities, but one of the things that I am deeply interested in is um, to figure out how best to help this collaboration between Etsy NIV and Open NIV. And this is um, work that's gonna take some time and, and, and to, to actually implement this avoidance of duplication. Yes, this is, this is going to probably work that is going to have to be piloted in different ways and see which ways works better than other because uh, there's many issues. Uh, some of them are legal issues related to IPRs. Uh, some others are um, uh, barriers such as uh, communications barriers because we use different terminology maybe, barriers that because we, we use different processes and methodology, uh, and finally the typical barrier between people doing different things. Uh, people that write you know, requirements and define architecture are of a different kind of a different world than people that write code and they often have to sit down together and talk to each other uh, rather than throwing over the fence documents at each other. So. so, as well as doing that, of course, you've got your day-to-day your -day job um, at, at Clearpath Networks. Um, how is Clearpath taking NFE and, and what is it specifically doing with it? So, Clearpath is a, is a relatively young and very dynamic company that um, uh, has joined the, the NFE industry uh, because they were actually into developing a cloud-based solution for a very long time. And when NFV emerged, uh, they realized that they are right in the midst of that. Um, we have a, 
a very interesting platform that is very well suited for virtual CP type of use cases. Uh, the, the intent is to take that platform and expand it as much as possible to cover all the virtual CP use cases and then other use cases as well, such as a virtual home environment. And you know, the, the sky is the limit. So now that I'm in charge of product strategy there, we'll see where we go with that. But uh, we have some very interesting assets, technology assets, that make possible this platform to be actually much more valuable than just for virtual CP. So how does this help operators to stem the flow of, of, of money, of spending, of CapEx and, and OpEx? How, how, how can you assist them to, to minimize their, their, their spend? So before I get into, into the CapEx and OpEx, let me point one, one thing out. And I think the main uh, driver for network function virtualization is actually neither CapEx nor OpEx. In my opinion, the main driver for network function virtualization uh, to take place is the fact that uh, it allows for rapid introduction of new services. So you can rapidly introduce or tear down services without uh, a great effort. Um, and if you think about the rapid introduction of new services, that also brings money. So this is uh, really, NAV is really primarily should be affecting the top line rather than the bottom line with CapEx and OpEx. Now switching to the CapEx and OpEx, um, I believe that CapEx, I don't see CapEx being a great advantage with network function virtualization. Eventually maybe, but initially no, because initially there's gonna be more expenditure on CapEx before you can um, you know, get rid of some, some CapEx. OPEX, I think, has a, has a pretty good uh, uh, future in, in NFV because when NFV is fully realized, I think things will be much more automated. And because of automation, it's going to reduce the, the types of operations that we have right now. Having said that, initially, it's going to be probably um, additional CapEx and additional OPEX eventually because uh, unfortunately, the, you know, the, the problem of replacing what we have, so the traditional network elements with the traditional elements uh, management system and, and operating operation system that support the, the, the network elements and so on, um, replacing that with a similar infrastructure of virtual network functions, virtual network services, um, virtual network function managers and so on, um, it's not something that can be done uh, smoothly. Um, it's basically a forklift retrofit that is relatively costly. And so um, initially I, I can see that there's going to be more capex and more opex before it becomes less of both. Um, and I think every operator has their own plans on how to migrate towards NFV. In some cases, it's probably greenfield on, on new functions that they wanted to introduce. It's probably smoother and easier to do it. On the ones that replace legacy functions, um, it, it may take a little bit longer and it might be gradual. And I think the challenge is going to be really on the operation systems that are currently in place, whether they can or not support this transition. Um, will there be needed features in those operation systems that will allow the gradual transition, or will those have to be replaced in order to provide that gradual transition possible for the, for the network functions, right? Well, Michael, we'll, we'll, soon, uh, we'll soon find out in the, in the months and, and years ahead. But for now, best of luck with uh, both your new roles and thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to join you.